this episode of Destination Truth, Josh travels to Micronesia in the forgotten island of Panape, where natives say these crumbling ruins are haunted by ancestral spirits. What do you think that you saw out there? He said that it's a ghost. Navigating choppy seas and hiking through dense jungles to this mysterious former place of worship, can Josh and his team witness for themselves what has the locals living in fear? Holy oh, You see that? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I just saw a shadow. Next, Josh leads his crew to North Africa, where desert nomads fear a demonic succubus is to blame for a rash of recent mutilations. She's very dangerous. She can tear men apart. Team Truth soars across the mountains of Morocco to investigate this legendary beast. It sounded like it was coming from this room. <laughs> Josh Gates. In my travels, I've seen some unexplainable things, and I've done some things I can't quite explain. Now, I've pulled together a team armed with the latest technology in the search for answers to the world's strangest mysteries. I'm not sure what's out there waiting for me, but I know what I'm looking for. The truth. Every week, we get dozens of emails from viewers asking us to explore some terrifying location. Sorry, Rick in Scottsdale, your mother-in-law's house isn't the kind of place we're after. But recently, a viewer emailed me about mysterious ancient ruins called Nan Madal on the Micronesian island of Panape. This DT fan passed by the ruins on a boat, only to have terrified locals steer the ship away. They told him that evil spirits of the long-dead rulers of Nan Madal haunt this dangerous place and believe that those who enter after sundown risk serious illness or even death. Our research revealed centuries of reports of ghostly apparitions, glowing orbs of light, and unexplained sounds emanating from these watery ruins. Built more than a thousand years ago, the so-called Venice of the Pacific is a collection of 93 tiny man-made islands separated by a network of saltwater canals. The majority of ghostly sightings within the complex have taken place here, at the royal mortuary tomb of Nandawas, where the ancient rulers are believed to be buried. And here, a large temple on the eastern part of the site, where, legend has it, Governor Berg, a German explorer, removed sacred bones, became violently ill, and died. To this day, the site is largely unexcavated, and there is no explanation as to how this place was built. Eager to follow up on our viewers' request, we assembled our equipment for another Destination Truth exclusive, as we'd be the first team to investigate the ghostly claims of Nan Madal. Our team flew west 6,100 miles across the Pacific Ocean to Guam. From there, it was just a short hop due south to the island of Panape. Though it's the capital of Micronesia, Panape retains a relaxed island vibe, a quality best showcased in our one-of-a-kind rental car. Greatest car in DT history. I mean, there's not much else to say. For years, I've been saying it. Take an old crappy truck and a cheeky hut and put them together. And finally, they listen. Rebranding our show as Destination Daiquiri, our tiki van got us into the island groove as we drove across Panape. In need of supplies, we headed to the island's only real town, where they take laid back to a whole new level. This town is exhausted. Look at them. And I took a moment to check in on my investments. A lot of uh, a lot of people aren't aware of this, but I run a small chain of markets here in Micronesia. This is my second store, JG2. I tried to haggle for some rare souvenirs. And how much are they? Forty. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 10, but you throw in Damon Wayans in major pain. <laughs> Do we have a deal, sir? All stocked up on supplies, we hit the road. Bobby, get out of the tank. We're leaving. Across town, we met with Father Fran Hesel, a local priest who is an expert on the ancient ruins. How do Pompeians today regard the site? They regard it with uh, religious awe. I mean, I get the sense that people are, uh, that a lot of locals are quite scared of it. They certainly don't feel comfortable going around the place at night. And why do you think they're scared of it? Places that are filled with power are also filled with danger. They avoid these things because there are spirits around that can harm them. And that's a good reason to stay away, because you just don't know what's going to happen. I wanted to learn more about the story of Governor Berg, who locals claim was made ill by spirits after excavating bones from one of Nan Madal's many tombs. I met with Panape's cultural ambassador, Edgar Santos, to learn more. There was a German governor who wanted to dig the 
the, the grave of a warrior. But uh, when he finished the king, he, he came back home and he started to get really ill. And he, it was said that he was screaming, he was seeing people. And he died a very horrible and painful death. I wanted to hear from direct eyewitnesses, but on our way to our next interview, our investigation came to a sudden halt. Oh, dude, we're being pulled over. Hey, Josh, we're being pulled over. The cops are behind us. I am getting pulled over by the police. The highway, there's no, you're gonna pass. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sorry I was in the left lane. I have a, um, have a tiki hut on the back of the car. I was just worried about ripping it off. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll, try, I'll try to stay in the right lane. It's just because there's some low-hanging branches. Okay. I'm staying over here. Thank you. Thank you, hey, thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Have a good day, guys. Whew, that was a close one. That's one thing I don't want to see on this island is a jail. I love that you can get pulled over and use the there's a tiki hut on my roof defense and get away with it. Not a lot of places in the world you can pull that move. Back on the road, we tracked down some local fishermen who said while visiting the main tomb of Nanda Was, they had a terrifying encounter. I understand you had this experience where you saw something strange. Can you tell me exactly what it is that you saw? Uh, him and his brother, they went fishing. They saw uh, like a flame. Like a flame? Yeah. And what do you think it was? What do you think that you saw out there? He thinks there are ghosts at Nanmatol. This man claims to have heard and seen strange things in the ruins as well. He saw a woman sitting on a rock, and when she looked at, the face is not like our face. She looks like a skeleton. The locals informed me that to enter Nanmadal, I'd need to get permission from the tribal leader who controls the site. We trekked into their village for an important audience with the chief. Without his blessing, this entire investigation would go nowhere. I just want to say thank you for having us here. We feel really honored to, to be allowed to come here. We're here at your discretion and your permission, and we thank you very much for having us. It, it means a great deal to us. The chief then invited us to drink a potent concoction known as Sakao. Made from the extract of a local plant, this less than appetizing beverage is sacred. Wanting to stay on the chief's good side, we happily downed this intoxicating cocktail. Thank you. After an internal discussion with his advisors, the chief gave us his blessing to enter Nan Madal. Panape is one of the wettest places on earth, receiving more than 300 inches of rainfall annually. We began our soggy six-mile hike north of the village, crossing over rocky terrain, pristine tropical landscapes, and thick jungle brush. We finally reached a remote beach where the chief's escorts would ferry us to the ruins. All right, get ready to sink to the bottom of the ocean. Here we go. We loaded the gear into the tribe's rustic canoes, crossed our fingers, and set sail in the choppy waters. We fought through the waves, hoping to keep the equipment and ourselves from tumbling overboard. After some tough paddling, we caught a little breeze from the south and finally coasted into the canals of Nan Madal. Once on land, we immediately set up our base camp. Fighting the heavy rain, Sean set up a tent that would provide some shelter from the elements. We also set up four IR cameras that would look out over the canals and capture anything moving in the surrounding water. Vanessa would monitor the cameras from base camp and alert us to any activity. Well, guys, we got a lot of ground to cover tonight. We got a lot of water to cover tonight. You know, for literally thousands of years, people have believed that this is a place of great energy. We've been told that terrible things will happen if you come out here. This is a dangerous place to be. So guys, in terms of how we divide this up tonight, let's all take a look at this map for a second. To start off the night, I'm gonna lead a team and try to find Nanduas, the large temple. And uh, Bobby, why don't you take a team out and see if you can find the area where Governor Berg was excavating uh, and where he removed those bones. All right, guys, let's get to it, come on. Bobby and Sean would travel to the outer edges of the ruins by kayak. Ali, Mike, and I would attempt to wade through the marshy terrain by foot to reach the temple. So, Ali, what do you think the locals are afraid of out here? You think they're having some sort of real experience? Well, I gotta say, before we got here, I felt like a lot of it was storytelling. But now that we're here, I'm, 
I don't know, there is a there is a creepy feel here. Something in the air is just making me feel like we're not alone, you know? I'll tell you one thing about Micronesia, plenty of humidity. You're hot? Stop it. Let me check my watch. It's, ah, yep, 1,000 degrees. Yeah, the air is very heavy. According to the map, Governor Berg's tomb is right around here. Check these rocks out. That looks like the edge of a tomb, yeah? Bobby from the base camp. Hey, V, we are over at the tomb where Governor Berg did an excavation. It's a huge wall out here. We're going to try and find an opening. Oh, I'm taking once we're inside. All right, sounds good. There's got to be a way in, or at least a spot where the wall's pretty low that we can cross. Let's, uh, let's keep motoring. I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, I'm seeing an orb coming in and out of the trees. Come here, look at this. Look, look, oh, it just, it just popped through here. Look, look, you see that? You see that? Oh, yeah. You see that? Mm -hmm. Dude, it's gone. Holy shit. Where'd it go? And the other team is all the way on the other side of the site. I mean, there's no way it was them, especially not up in the trees. It was literally an orb peeking through in between, uh, in between leaves. I'm not seeing it anymore, are you? No, I'm not seeing anything, bro. It's not in. It's not on camera. All right. Well, let's uh, let's head in the direction that it was at. Okay. All right. All right. Let's shed a little light on the situation here. Here you go. Oh, oh. See that? Over there. You see it? Yeah, I do. I think that's the big temple, guys. Nanduas? Yeah, I think that's Nanduas. I just don't see a land bridge that takes us over there. Let's see if we can get across in the water. Here we go. It's huge. Look at the size of those walls. I'm about knee deep over here. Be careful. There's a staircase over here, guys. What is in this water? Look at this place. It's huge. This is like an outer defense wall. That's why it's so tall. There should be uh, a couple of inner courtyards with some passages that lead to some tombs. This is definitely a hot spot for us. We have to figure out how to get inside here and get inside the inner wall as well. Huge corner here. The locals certainly think this place is extremely haunted. Looks like the path continues back here. Oh, I got an opening here. Looks like a tunnel. It goes into some sort of interior. You can see some plants growing up in there. See anything yet? No, it's just dark. I'm out. It's over there. I'm in some sort of courtyard. Torch went out. Come on up. Guys, I just heard something in here. As you guys were calling through, from this corner, I heard what sounded like whispering. But it's so echoey in here with these high walls, maybe it was just sound bouncing around. But it sounded like I heard a voice in here for a split second. Why don't we split up? I'll go this way, you guys go that way? OK, sounds good. Yeah, we'll try to cover as much of it as we can. OK. Let me know if you hear anything. All right. It's like a maze almost, you know? Oh, wow. 
What is strong enough to knock down all those huge logs? Dude, there's some serious rustling going on over here. Like somebody's moving, like almost like footsteps. Oh my gosh. Dude, I just saw a shadow. No joke. Right over here to my right. No way. Yeah. I just got the chills, too. Here comes Gates. Josh. What's up, guys? Dude, we just saw a shadow right there against that wall. Throw your flare on it, see if you can catch anything. I came around this corner, and a shadow went up the side of the wall. We heard a bunch of noises in here, like around this tree. Back in here? Yeah. There's just like a flurry of activity. All right, well, let's go to wherever these noises were coming from back in here, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Come on, let's check it out. All right. You know, seeing that orb of light, this is where it came from. Maybe this is a, uh, a good place to do an EVP session, yeah? Yeah, let's definitely, let's break it out. Is there anyone here? Was that you making the orbs of light? There's something out there, man. There's something big moving out there. Were you responsible for the governor's death? Whatever you heard was coming from back here, yeah? Yeah, this area. I don't see any fruit in these trees. That's not what was dropping. Wow, well, I Oh, look at this, look at this. This must be the main tomb. We're in the center of the site now. This drops down. This is definitely the main tomb. This is royal. Let's get down inside this main tomb and uh, knock out an EVP session, yeah? See if we can get through here to the inside. This is the most sacred place. Let's break out the digital recorder. Okay. Okay, here's the digital recorder. Power it up here. Okay, you ready, Mike? Yeah. Is there anybody here with us? If you are in our presence, please make a sound. Does it feel colder to you guys? Yeah, it just got really cold in here. The temperature dropped. I'm sweating bullets, and then suddenly it feels like I'm in a meat locker now. Mm -hmm. It feels like there's cold air bleeding in out of the walls. Are you making it colder here? I need to get out of here, guys. Sorry, I'm so sick right now. Dizzy and nauseous, yeah. Hey, Josh, for Sean, come in. Send it for Sean, Josh. Something's wrong with me. I don't know what it is. I'm feeling terrible. I'm gonna start hiking back towards camp. Um, why don't you meet me there and take a look at it? All right, Josh, I'll meet you back there. Oh, I'm not gonna make it. Josh! Hey, Josh, for Sean, come in. Something's wrong with me. I don't know what it is. I'm feeling terrible. I'm gonna start hiking back towards camp. Um, why don't you meet me there and take a look at it? All right, Josh, I'll meet you back there. Oh, I'm not gonna make it. Josh! I struggled back to base camp, getting sicker by the minute. Delirious and weak, I was happy to meet up with Sean, who immediately administered an IV. We have flow. With the sun nearly above the horizon, my brutal night had mercifully come to an end. The team reassembled at base camp to carry the gear and me out of the jungle. I was sick an additional 18 times, making the flight back to the States interesting for the guy in seat 11B. Back in the States, we retraced our investigation frame by frame, looking and listening for paranormal evidence. We began by reviewing our visual evidence. Dan actually sees an orb, and then he's able to capture it on camera. Let's check it out. I'm seeing an orb coming in and out of the trees. Come here. Look at this. Oh, it just, it just popped through here. Look, look, you see that? You see that? What's strange about it to me is almost that it's pulsing. You notice that? 
To me, the pulsing almost feels electrical, which leads me to believe that maybe it's something either mechanical or it's something naturally occurring, like uh, the light of an insect or something. But it's an interesting piece of evidence because it does line up with the eyewitness testimonials. They do claim to see orbs and lights. I just wish we had a little bit more of it that we could analyze. It's like we see it for just a split second, and then it ducks behind these leaves. We just don't see enough of it. Yeah. So this recording is from an EVP session we did inside the ruins. Are you making it colder here? Right there. Whoa! You can definitely hear some kind of speech, whether it's human or not. It's hard to tell because it's buried behind so much ambient noise. It sounds like, it sounds like yes, but it sounds demonic. It sounds like yes. It's a clear answer to our question. I mean, it's spooky, but he's saying yes. I think that's great. Okay, what else do we have? At one point during an EVP, um, it actually got colder. We all sort of felt it. Let's, let's take a look at this clip. It just got really cold in here. The temperature like, I'm sweating bullets, and then suddenly it feels like I'm in a meat locker now. You're buried behind thick stones. All of a sudden, it gets colder. I didn't, I didn't know where that uh, air was coming from. Look, a lot of people say that changes in temperature can be a sign of the paranormal. And another important note to make is that you got sick immediately after this. Sorry, I'm so sick right now. I feel dizzy and nauseous, yeah. <sighs> I'd like to apologize for all of the vomiting that I did that night, guys. I'm sure in the earphones it didn't sound very good. It just penetrated my brain. I, I was getting sick by proxy. You know, just listening to it, I wanted to puke. It just felt like I was suddenly overwhelmed with nausea. I don't know that we can definitively call it paranormal, but it certainly aligns to eyewitness testimony and experiences, that's for sure, mm -hmm. you know? Our fan-fueled expedition to the shores of Micronesia brought us in contact with Polynesian customs and a powerful island king. In the untouched wilderness of this Pacific paradise, we set sail and followed the trade winds to the watery ruins of a forgotten wonder. We cast light on claims of paranormal activity, and I found out the hard way that the history of upheaval here is more than just a myth. Because our experiences held a mirror to that of centuries of other reports, we can only conclude that something powerful is lurking in the ruins of Nan Madal. It's safe to say most guys have gone a little crazy in their pursuit of a woman. For me, it was the summer I grew a soul patch to impress my high school star cheerleader, Stacy Miller. Call me Stacy. But in Morocco, men are chasing one woman to their deaths, a beautiful creature called Aisha Candisha. She appears in the night, and those unfortunate enough to catch a glimpse of Aisha are so spellbound by her beauty that they follow her into the desert, never to be seen again. Far-fetched though it may sound, after a spate of recent eyewitness sightings and very real disappearances, some believe this centuries-old vixen is back on the prowl. We combined years of reported accounts and recent eyewitness sightings to create a 3D animation of this deadly temptress. Equally renowned for her beauty and her malevolent powers, Aisha Candisha is said to prowl the desolate wilderness of northern Morocco, seducing passers-by into insanity. This she-devil is said to have hooved goat-like legs, as well as large leather wings adorned with razor-sharp talons. Though Aisha may be part animal, her allure is all woman. She is said to be a stunning enchantress with piercing black eyes and long flowing hair. Anyone unlucky enough to cross her path is instantly driven to madness, or worse, killed outright. I wanted to find out if this Moroccan bombshell was a supernatural cougar or just an old wives' tale. So we packed up our gear and headed to North Africa to investigate. We flew almost 6,000 miles from Los Angeles, landing in Morocco's largest and most famous city, Casablanca. With a rich history dating back more than a millennium, this port city is a place of extraordinary custom, boasting immense houses of worship and the world's largest minaret. It is perhaps most famous, though, for its cinematic legacy. And as we passed by the world's famous Rick's Cafe, I just couldn't help myself. Black and white, please. Plain leaves, and you're not on it, you'll regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. But what about us? Boys and bears. Here's looking at you, kid. Okay, we can leave Casablanca. Having crossed item number 59 off my bucket list, we got back on the road. From Casablanca, we headed 140 miles south to the fabled city of Marrakesh, where we'd meet one of the foremost experts on Aisha Candisha. This city is an exotic sensory overload, with labyrinthine streets housing the most famous markets on Earth. The merchants of Marrakesh are famous for driving a hard bargain, but I found them to be both friendly and trustworthy. You're happy here? I'm very happy. The first time? My first time in Morocco. I hope not last. You are the nicest guy in Morocco. Thank you. Where's brother. my wallet? Well, well, for what? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, where's my wallet? 
The market featured an array of wildlife, from the menacing to the adorably menacing. Welcome to Marrakesh. You've got Ebola. Ow! <laughs> this necklace gives me all my power. Do not touch my necklace. The endless stalls contain glittering golden treasures. This is it right here. The accessory I never knew I needed. And an array of accessories. <laughs> it looks good on me? Yeah, sure. That's fantastically good. Sir, I look like Huckleberry Finn in this thing. Where you come from? I'm from the Deep South. I'm from the Mississippi. <laughs> Wait a second, Gabe. How long have you been wearing that hat? Dude, I've been wearing this the whole season. I don't remember that hat. The local salesmen seem to have a strange obsession with American celebrities. Yeah, Robin Williams. Robin Williams, that's yeah, Robin me, yep. Williams, yeah. I'm Robin Williams. I hope you enjoy my work. I'd like to apologize for Bicentennial Man. All the bartering had left me parched, and I took a drink from one of Marrakesh's mobile water fountains. Oh, why does it taste fermented? <clears throat> very, very good water. Mm. All done. Emerging from the market, we strolled over to the nearby university to meet a professor who is an expert on the Aisha story. Mm. Is she a spirit or is she mm -hmm. biological? Les deux, les deux. Uh, dans la mémoire populaire, c'est un esprit. People they think it, it exists physically. They think it's real. It's a real woman that show up. If I'm looking for Aisha Kandisha, where would I go? Et dans les régions où il y a encore des forêts, moi je pense à l'Atlas. If you want to find the Aisha Kandisha, you need to go to the Atlas Mountain or in abundant places. We followed the professor's lead and headed south toward the Atlas Mountains. After passing through the deserts beyond Marrakesh, we climbed precipitous passes along treacherous winding roads before finally reaching the city of Wazazet. Dubbed the door of the desert, this remote city was once a modest African trading post that has blossomed into a provincial capital. It is also home to several witnesses who believe they had an encounter with Aisha Kandisha. How do I know if Aisha Kandisha is present? How do I know if she's nearby? <laughs> She makes noise uh, that it sounds like chains on the ground. And at night, if you hear uh, steps of camels, that means she's in the area. You have to be very careful about that. And do you think that Aisha Kandisha is very dangerous? She's very dangerous. She has long, sharp uh, nails. She can tear men apart. Next, we spoke with another witness who had a sighting just days earlier. Where have you seen her? Yeah. He was in the mountain and he saw uh, something from far away. It looks like a woman. And do you think this was Aisha Kandisha? Yeah, he believes that she, she was uh, Aisha Kandisha because she's a very beautiful lady. She has like legs of a camel. And if I'm looking for Aisha Kandisha, where should I look? There. There. Out in the desert, there is a kasbah that it was abandoned over 100 years ago, and the people believe that uh, she lives there. The abandoned kasbahs where Aisha was rumored to live were scattered deep in the vast deserts of the Atlas Range. With the roads further into the mountains in notoriously bad condition, we waited until the light of a new day and set to work on assembling a mode of transportation that we could fire up to give us a bird's eye view of the endless sands. Nothing about this feels safe, right? Should I just not worry about that huge tear of the balloon right there? I'm sure that's fine. What happens if like, one of these cables snaps? Shut up, Mike. I, but I enjoy the view. Everybody keep your eyes open for a dangerous female monster. <laughs> At an altitude of 1,000 feet, we were able to drift over huge tracts of desert and carefully scan for the ruined buildings where Aisha had most recently been encountered. Hey guys, Atlas Mountains are right there. You can see the whole range. Keep your eyes peeled. We should be coming up on those abandoned settlements. Right there, right there, a group of structures, dead ahead. Keep your eyes peeled. We should be coming up on those abandoned settlements. Right there, right there, a group of structures, dead ahead. I can see some walls. It looks like a settlement. After locating the cluster of abandoned kasbahs in the distance, we marked them on GPS and began our descent back to terra firma. These ruins were on the outer fringes of rocky desert trails more than 20 miles from our touchdown location. Since making the journey by foot wasn't overly appealing, we called in a specialized set of wheels. This is what I call a car! With no paved roads in sight, our dune buggies made quick work of tearing up the desert trails and getting us to our destination. Somebody 
you should really pave this. It wasn't long before Vanessa's need for speed caught up with her. You're driving like a lunatic. Now look what you've done. After a few requisite I told you so's, we patched up Vanessa's flat. One, two, three. <sighs> Rattled over a few more dusty miles and reached our investigation site where we set up base camp. We activated four IR cameras along the perimeter of the Casbahs. Vanessa would monitor the cameras from base camp and alert us to any unusual activity. I would lead a team with Bobby, Dan, and Mike to explore one set of ruined buildings, while Ali, Sean, and Gabe would investigate another set of structures seen from the air. So what do you think Aisha Kandisha? I think she's very elusive. I mean, some of the eyewitness accounts are so varied. It almost sounds like it could be a couple different things that people are seeing. Yeah, I mean, some of the descriptions sound really outlandish, and some of the other ones sound like, you know, something biological that people are seeing. It's hard to believe that anything really lives out here, let alone a topless woman with goat legs. <laughs> they say that she's very beautiful, buxom, seduces men. Sounds like my kind of creature. <laughs> I got a small structure on the thermal. Looks like a really small standalone building over there in that palm grove. What's the temperature you're getting on that thing? Air temperature looks like we're still in the high 60s, but the building's a little bit hotter. The clay and mud have probably absorbed a lot of the heat from the day. Looks like one large room, no roof left, sidewalls missing on this side. Looks like nobody's been living here for a very long time. It's amazing this construction lasts. It's just literally mud. Hey, guys. Yeah. Got a couple things over here. Oh, yeah. A small little, like, a bird's nest here. Yeah, it is a little bird's nest. Got a pretty sizable dropping here. It looks exactly like a veggie burger on my camera. It really does. Come look. It no, looks it exactly like, like a veggie burger. Like a patty. What is wrong with you two? You do put a bun on you that You could, thing. If, yeah, on a, a cafe mustard. on Sunset. That looks just delicious. All right, Mike, I'm going to need you to bag a sample of that. Bring it back as evidence. Oh, no, no, no. That's what you do. You do you do the evidence stuff. I do the audio stuff. No, you're on and on about how it looks like a veggie burger. You're obviously <laughs> super into it. Why don't you go over there and pick it up? Why don't you collect the evidence, Mike? I'm going to go investigate the other part of this building yeah. over here. Great. I'll collect the poop. They, yeah. You do that. <laughs> Always. I'm the guy at the end who has to pick up the poo, put it in my pocket, <laughs> take it back for analysis. Ah, oh, here we go. We are in the middle of the desert. Besides, these cast balls is just flat land. Oh, hey, Allie, check this out. It's a footprint. That's definitely a footprint. It looks like a human footprint, doesn't it? Yeah. That's weird, though. We were way the hell out here. Maybe they were looking for Aisha Candisha, too. Oh, this cast is huge. Yeah, let's make our way inside, guys. Let's go rock the Casbah. Oh, there it is. I was wondering how long it would take. Casbah's like a maze. You hear that? Yeah. Wow. There's that bird right there. See it? Oh, it's an owl. Full moon tonight. Did you hear that outside? I just heard some dirt scuffle. <gasps> you definitely heard that? Definitely heard that. It sounded like it was coming from this room. <gasps> Those were bats. Oh, there goes another one. All right, we got a lot of cast, but a cover. This is like doing an investigation on the moon. There's absolutely nothing here. I know, except for this giant building. Look at that thing. Huge Casbah. 
Okay, let's see if Aisha's inside. Look at this whole wall's made of smashed pots. Yeah. You're right, look at that. Yeah, this whole wall is made up of old pottery. Look at this tower, it's still in pretty good shape. Wow, look at this place. All right, guys, this place is pretty big. Let's spread out and take a look around. Hey, guys! Come here! We are teeth. Doesn't look human, but I'm not sure exactly what it is. Doesn't look like they were from something that was butchered. They're just sort of hanging out here. Okay, let's bag these up. I don't know what these are from, but take them back, find out what kind of animal's been living in here. Guys, look around for any other signs that something's living in here. This place is huge. It's just room after room of ruin. I mean, it's like walls, ceilings, floors just crumbled away. This place is amazing. This whole wall's been knocked out. We got a nice open view of the dried riverbed out there. Why don't we do a parabolic session, Mike? Yes, yeah, a nice wide open clearing. It's pretty quiet out there. A lot of crickets. Here's some barking dogs. Wait, 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 wait. I hear something. What do you hear? It sounds like a chain. Wanna hear it? I. I... Take, take a listen. It sounds like a chain. Yeah. But it's, it sounds mechanical. Mm hmm Doesn't it? Maybe like a chain motor. Like It, it sounds almost like an engine, though. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, it sounds mechanical. It sounds like maybe a generator or an engine or something. Yeah, it's whirring like a motor. It's a familiar sound, but I haven't seen anything out here. They say it sounds like chains. That's the sound of chains. Yeah, definitely. You know, maybe they hear something in the distance from another village. They don't know what it is. They associate it with the legend because she's supposed to make this kind of... Metallic sound. Could be what they're hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's keep scanning and get across that riverbed and see if we can find some more buildings. Yeah. I just saw something white flash through that hole in the wall over there. Let's go check it out. There's nothing out here. Nothing at all. You hear that? What the hell is that? I don't see anything on this camera. Guys, I hear footsteps behind me. They went away, but I just heard about four footsteps behind me. Vanessa for Sean. Go ahead, V. Sean, I just saw something. It was right by base camp. I just turned my head and it was looking at me. I don't know what it was. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. It just took off running towards you. All right, V, Allie just heard footsteps. We're going to go ahead and come back towards that way. Try to meet us halfway and we'll see if we can intercept this thing. All right, um, I'll, I'll come meet you. All right, hey guys, let's roll. Guys, I got a passageway over here. Look at this thing. This building looks like it's about to fall down on itself. Come on, you don't actually want to go down into that, do you? What if it just collapses on itself and just gets buried? Well, it's, come on, it's been standing for a couple hundred years. What are the odds it's gonna go today? Here goes nothing. Okay, guys, really careful. These walls are literally just crumbling apart. <sighs> guys, it keeps going. <sighs> Really careful, these walls are literally just crumbling apart. Damn it! Whole wall just collapsed! Get out from underneath that thing. It's coming down. This Dude. whole piece of wall just came down right here. Look at it. Oh my god. Dude, I told you this is a bad idea. That thing came down like a foot from my face. Let's just try to get through here as quick as we can. Hey, V. Did you see anything? We took off as soon as you called us. And you would think that between us and you, we would have ran into something, but we saw nothing. 
Yeah, we definitely heard something though. We heard it like behind us. It was like a shuffling. It was definitely s steps. Like footsteps, like human footsteps, or was it like four um, legs? Could have been either. I mean, I didn't see anything. It was on the other side of the cast ball. Oh, you guys, I just found a bone. That right there is a hinge joint. Even if Aisha Candisha doesn't exist, this could help us understand what creatures are lurking out here, you know? It's worth bagging up. Could be whatever they're seeing. All right, guys, let's head back to base camp. Slow if it's an animal, I don't want to scare it. What was that? What the f was that? Did you hear that? Definitely. Oh! Don't move, don't move, don't move. I just saw it on the thermal. Whatever it was, ducked right behind that wall right there, right there. Keep your eyes right on that corner because it's right in there, I think. All right, guys, it sounds like we might have found our culprits. It's not like some angry dogs. I got three of the thermal. How are they surviving out here? Probably by eating dudes like us. I continued to scan the area using the FLIR thermal imager, but didn't spot anything else moving around in the darkness. With the sun approaching the Atlas Mountains, we headed back to base camp and gathered our gear for the long trip home. In Los Angeles, we reviewed our audio findings, and though we did hear some strange sounds, it hardly qualified as definitive proof of an unknown creature. The physical remains we collected were brought to Jim Dines from the Los Angeles Museum of Natural History for identification. Well, Jim, we recovered a number of uh, pieces of physical evidence from our trip to Morocco. Uh, I'd love to have you weigh in and uh, let me know if you can identify all these. Absolutely. So in this bag here, we have some fragments of a tooth, definitely mammalian tooth. It looks to me, though, that it's tooth fragments from a cow. And from what I know of the legend, this creature would have a human-like upper body, including human teeth. So this would not be consistent with Aisha Candisha. And our largest piece of evidence. OK, what, what I'm seeing here is part of the lower leg bone from some sort of animal. Well, the real question is, uh, is this the leg bone from Aisha Candisha? It could be the leg bone from Aisha Candisha. My understanding is that the lower body of this creature is either camel or, or cow. I've got something right here that matches up exactly. Exact same shape, exact same size, and this happens to be the lower leg bone from a cow. There's no way I could rule out that this is actually just a cow. I would like to see the rest of the skeleton. You know, I'm a scientist, I'm very yes. skeptical. Yeah, you remain a skeptic. That's why you're working here. That's right. Aisha Candisha is a demonic fixture in North African lore. From the cinematic streets of Casablanca to those meandering markets of Marrakesh, her story is universally known. We searched for her from high above the Atlas Mountains and journeyed deep into the desert to reach her home. Chains? We may have heard them. That sounds like a chain. Yeah. Mysterious animals? Sure. Sean, I just saw something. It was right by base camp. But nothing to substantiate a monster. Though eyewitnesses claim to have seen her, their evidence is circumstantial at best. Aisha may be a temptress, even a succubus, but she is also something else, the stuff of legend.